Good day, this is Michael with Iconicist. Today we'll be doing a real-time workflow video communicating our background removal feature using a reference image. Uh, so first thing that we can see here is we have live view enabled. Now as you can see my hand going back and forth in front of the camera, that's, that's basically a real-time preview of what the camera sees. And the nice thing about this is we're going to be able to kind of compose our image before we even capture it while viewing on a large kind of camera view on our monitor screen. So the um, first thing we're going to notice, obviously, is it's blurry, and uh, we're not sure about the exposure here, so we're going to go into our camera control settings, and that's going to pop up a new window, and what we're going to see here is a couple things. First thing we want to do is auto-focus our camera. I'm going to click this AF button, and that's going to bring everything into focus. If we did want to kind of view this up close and personal, we can go and say live view zoom, move up to 10%. And we can see that uh, everything's looking pretty good in focus there. So let me just fit that back. All right, so we've adjusted our focus. And now this is going to be an important step. We want to make sure that in capture mode that the toggle is to the left side, manual focus. That means it's going to use a fixed focal point for every shot over the sequence that we are, uh, are imaging. Now, the next thing that we can do if needed is adjust our kind of aperture shutter speed to adjust for exposure. The nice thing about that is we're seeing the result in real time. So you can see here, I'll adjust my shutter speed from 1 40th of a second to 1 25th of a second, and it's gonna lighten everything up. And overall, that looks pretty good as far as exposure, so I will stick with that. Now, my last thing I'm gonna do is set a crop. Uh, you could certainly shoot everything that's inside of the frame, but what I will do here is go ahead and enable crop, and then click and drag on my monitor screen here, and define an area that I wish to shoot. Now, the nice thing about crop is maybe you need to shoot images at a perfect square or a custom ratio. You can define crop options. If I click this little three dot icon, you can see crop options and you can kind of uh, choose a custom ratio or custom size or a square for your crop if needed. So I won't be doing that. What I will just do now is go ahead and hit snap and that's gonna capture my image. Inside of the software, what I've done is say, automatically re-enable my live view. So even though it's captured the image down here, it's re-enabled live view. So typically in a product photography sequence, you don't just want to shoot one product image, you want to shoot many. So let's go ahead and shoot a second image here. I'll go ahead and adjust my object. And that's looking pretty good there. The important thing to do is we're going to stick with the same camera settings for every shot when doing our automated background removal using the reference image. And we're going to stick with the exact same crop as well. So I'm just going to hit the snap button again. Again, it will capture the image and upload it to the computer and then re-enable my live view again for a third and final shot. And this third and final shot will be our background only image. So I'll remove my shoe. And we'll just hit our snap button one more time. Now we'll take a picture of just the background. Now let's look at our images that we just shot. Obviously image one looks good and I'm just gonna close my camera settings window. Image two, the bottom of the product and image three, just the background image. So essentially what, what the process is gonna happen once we go into our editing tool, it's gonna try to decide what pixels differ in this image versus the background only image. So obviously it's gonna be the shoe itself and we're gonna see a slight kind of drop reflection here. Um, that's kind of what differs from shot two to shot three here. So we're gonna to wanna to say, okay, use this background only image and kind of use computer vision to understand what pixels change from image one to three or image two to three. So let's enter our editing tool. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna select images one and two. So I'm gonna hold shift after selecting the first and hit the second there. That means they're gonna batch apply once I apply my uh, reference image background removal. And then what I'm gonna do is open up the reference image BR tool here. And the first thing we wanna do, let me just move this kind of off to the side and I'm just gonna open this up a little bit here. We're gonna to wanna to choose our background image, which is the background only image. So I will select that. You can see it's highlighted blue. Now what we can do here is go ahead and start to adjust some kind of uh, some of the settings inside of here. We have default settings that are gonna work well for the most part, but you can adjust them accordingly. 
One thing that I'm going to do here, because I'm shooting a solid product, is I'm going to say constrain the selection to the clicked region. So I will click on a pixel of the background, and that will start kind of the process here. Now, if you have an object, for example, a tennis racket, um, you would want to use unconstrained selection, meaning that once it hits a hard edge, it will still look inside of the object for, you know, objects that match the background. So we can see it's a pretty good cutout here. Uh, what I'll probably want to do is maybe increase my threshold a bit. So I'll take it from 25 to 34. And as I make that change, we're going to see the image processing taskbar up top. And we can see it started to remove that kind of drop reflection that I had under my subject. So overall, that looks pretty good here. Um, one thing I probably would do as well is my mask grow radius. Um, sometimes you'll have a kind of an outer glow for a subject. Um, so you can actually have it eat into the object. We're working with a lot of pixels here. So I'll say eat in to the object by two pixels. And that will help kind of get rid of that outer glow. Now, if you want to inspect your next image, you can click on that and kind of see the preview of that. You would select that kind of down in the bottom here. I'm going to put trust that this process is going to work for all my objects. So I'm just going to hit apply. And again, because we have image one and two selected, that is shown by is highlighted in blue. It's going to apply to both images. So I'll hit apply and it will start running the process. As we can see, image one is now complete and image two should be complete here shortly. And let's just close our background removal kind of dialogue here. Let's inspect our images. So image one looks very good. That's on a transparent background now. Image two, it also did a great job on a transparent background. Uh, so that's kind of an overview of the reference image BR and uh, kind of how it works. This tool is going to do great um, for objects that you can eliminate shadows underneath. So I'm shooting on kind of a clear, clear kind of acrylic top, and that's why we're not having a harsh shadow under the object. It was more so just a lighter kind of drop reflection. That's much easier to remove than a than harsh shadow when working with this tool. And I guess the last thing will be if you did want to, you know, you can output these as PNG or TIFF images with and kind of uh, retain the transparent background properties. If you did want to just automatically say, I want to use a light gray background, you know, a specific RGB color value, uh, you can do that during the save process um, using the batch save or dynamic save tool. You'll just choose what you want to use for the background, the specific color, and it will automatically apply that to all the transparent pixels in the image. Now, if you have any questions, uh, the company name is Iconosys. And we do have our free tech support. Thank you so much.